Oceans excite me because they're, they're this massive blue expanse of potential for discovery and diving into the unknown. And I think that's, that's what really draws me to them. There's so much that we haven't discovered, there's so much that we haven't seen, there's so much potential for adventure and exploration. Um, and it's just, it's remarkable. Every time you put your head under the water or, or get out on the ocean, there's, there's a high probability that you're going to see or experience something that you've never ever seen before. Uh, Oceans Without Borders has three island sites, uh, Nemba Island off Zanzibar, Bermisi in the Karimbas Archipelago, and Benguera in the Bazaruta Archipelago in southern Mozambique. And it's Bermisi in the northern Karimbas Archipelago that is one of the, the hope spots uh, that was identified very early on in the hope spot program. And uh, the site, it truly signifies um, or embodies all the, the characteristics of a hope spot. Hope spots are these amazing places in the ocean so that have been identified as, as these really critical sites um, that are important for conserving the future of our oceans. So there are locations where there might be really special habitat or unique species or species that are endangered um, or places that have really unique processes, so something like a breeding site for a particular species. Um, there can also be places that have unique cultural value, um, some sort of unique cultural history, they ha have high economic value, uh, but most importantly, they're sites that could, by through conserving them, we can potentially give the rest of our oceans a really good chance of surviving. Our hope spot of Fumizi is, is an incredibly important site, uh, not only in itself, but also for the region. So Fumizi is this amazing place where it, there's incredibly high biodiversity. We've got huge numbers of different kinds of corals, different kinds of fish, predators, and all other things that live on a coral reef. And that diversity has been built up by the currents that have flowed across the Indian Ocean for millennia, uh, coming from the really high biodiversity centres of the Coral Triangle and then hitting the African coast almost exactly where Vermezi Island is located in the Karimbas. Uh, so those currents have been carrying life towards the African continent uh, for centuries. And all of that is, is building up in the northern Karimbas archipelago. So we've got huge numbers of species there. And not only is the huge diversity, but these species, very, a lot of them are actually really resilient as well. Corals around the world are facing threats from numerous sources, as are all of our marine ecosystems. So some of those include uh, pollution. Uh, we're all very aware of that at the moment, I think. That's come through in the media quite strongly. Uh, overfishing is having huge impacts on our oceans, and the same applies to coral reef ecosystems. One of the, the major impacts um, on, on coral reefs is coral bleaching. So this has been driven by increasing ocean temperatures that is causing um, corals to become stressed. So corals are used to living in a very narrow band of temperature range. Um, and as soon as the water temperatures move out of that band, they get stressed. Um, and then if that stress persists for long enough, then the corals die. And if corals die, then that takes the foundation of, out of the entire ecosystem. So the homes of fish and um, all the other invertebrate life that lives on coral reefs is then threatened. But in the northern Karimbas, there's a huge amount of resilience. So we've got these really deep water canyons close by to the reefs. Um, and we get this cool water upwelling onto the reefs. So where reefs around the world are facing the impacts of bleaching through rising ocean temperatures, the reefs around Vermezia are staying cool. So this means that the corals are healthy. If you've got healthy corals, then you're healthy, you have healthy fish populations. And the rest of the biodiversity is far more resilient than it is in places that are impacted by bleaching. So you've got the site that has high diversity, high resilience, and then it's also very reproductive. So the corals in the northern Crimbus, they, they have this mass spawning event that happens every year, and it's called locally, it's called the Kitsukulu. And during this, all the corals across all the reefs in the region, um, they reproduce at exactly the same time. So there's this huge amount of, of coral larvae that's been put into the water column and sent out in the currents to reefs uh, in the adjacent areas. Vermezia is actually a really important site for, for fish aggregations in addition to the corals. So we have documented a, a spawning aggregation site for, um, for Napoleon Ras. Uh, we suspect that the giant grouper, which is a, an incredibly threatened species, is also reproducing on our reefs. And we know of a grey reef shark aggregation where we've seen very, very young pups in numerous years. So we have a, a whole variety of really important fish um, and predatory species that are using our reefs to breed. And then not only the fish, but we also have turtles. So Vermezia is one of the few locations in um, East Africa where we know that green turtles nest all year round on our beaches. Um, some of the sites we also see horse turtles coming through. 
So it's, it's an area of incredible uh, reproduction and importance for, for many of the big marine species of the Western Indian Ocean. The best thing for me, I think, about working in the oceans is that most of the time you're surrounded by people that are incredibly passionate about the oceans. Um, there, there are people that, you know, even if they're not marine biologists, that are dedicating their lives to exploring and documenting and understanding this world. There are people that are fishermen that have spent their lives figuring out how to, how to catch a fish. So the Mission Blue program was established by um, a remarkable woman called Sylvia Earle. Uh, Sylvia Earle is, was featured on the, the front page of Time magazine as one of the, the greatest um, influence, female influences of change on our planet. And she's, she's commonly referred to as her deepness. And this is because she's an incredibly passionate um, and effective campaigner for the health of our oceans for, for well over 60 years now. Um, so Sylvia Earle was the winner of a, a, TED, um, a TED Talk competition in 2009 and the prize was to have a wish that she wanted to see in the world. And her wish was to establish the, the Mission Blue um, campaign, so the Mission Blue Alliance. And that alliance is um, the network of hope spots around the world. So by identifying these hope spots, um, these key places in our oceans that we need to, to protect, um, to ensure the health of our oceans at, at well into the future, um, we create this groundswell. So it's, it's connecting these, these individual sites that are identified by local communities um, put forward for conservation, uh, focused in media attention to really drive marine conservation from the bottom up to create political change. You can really have an impact on marine conservation when you're many, many thousands of miles away from, from any coastline or ocean. Um, and this is because it's the, it's the small choices that we make every day uh, that impact our ocean significantly. Um, so for some ideas on how to do this, we've established the Oceans With Our Borders Pledge. And the key thing with the pledge is to commit to being mindful about the choices that you make. So, so your consumer um, decisions really matter. Um, whether you buy plastic uh, packaging on your, on your vegetables or your daily groceries has an impact because it's likely that that makes its way into the oceans. The way you, um, where your products are sourced from. So what, is the, what are the carbon emissions associated with whatever you choose to buy? Um, your political choices matter as well. You know, make sure that that counts. Um, Educate yourself about the impacts uh, that your small actions have and then commit to sharing um, that education with those around you. And um, then obviously visit these sites as well, you know. So through Oceans Without Borders, we, um, you have access to the most incredible locations in the Western Indian Ocean. So come and immerse yourself in these environments, learn about them, be inspired, and then allow that what you learn in those spaces to influence the way you, you engage in your daily lives. Um, one, of the, one of the great ways to do that is to come on one of our small group journeys where we focus for a week on exactly um, you know, what your role can be in conserving our oceans, learning more about these inspiring ecosystems and um, being inspired to go and make a change in the world. Um, and through building your awareness, building your passion for the oceans and being inspired, uh, you can help us leave our oceans a better place. Hope spots are important because we can really focus attention on uh, these really unique special places on our planet. And through doing that, we create awareness around some of the major issues facing marine conservation on the planet. And we can really raise uh, political attention around these sites. So increase the chance of them being declared marine protected areas. And through doing that, uh, really offer our oceans a chance of being well conserved into the future.